Hi guys, welcome back. Jeff Allen off the green iron. guys Jeff off the gridiron today I'm at the shelter and uh, just a quick video I wanted to work on the shelter and use one of these okay this is an old hand auger and it uses uh, auger bits or bracing bits as they're called uh, just briefly just pointing at the di different features this is uh, kind of like the butt end much like a, a spindle on a, a bow drill would operate and it allows the the drill to spin around obviously this is offset so it allows you to kind of uh, crank the uh, the bit uh, the bit functions like this it starts with an initial screw and then you can see where it starts to kind of cut into uh, the wood using these these each of these flats and uh, obviously spiral up from there now with the handle you can lock it to work forward and backwards, but you also have this collar here, which if you engage it, much like a ratchet drill or a socket, it, it allows you to gain that purchase and continue to screw it. Likewise, if you turn it the other way, it works in reverse. If you turn it back to the middle, then it locks. So all the action that you do uh, and the effort you do put into the turning it goes right to the bit and into the wood. The whole time applying a downward pressure with the handle or uh, in some cases your chest or so and turning it that way. We're going to try to attach this log to the frame uh, of the, uh, the bedding area. So we're going to back up the camera and give it a try. So what we're looking to do is work this this bit down through the through the log like so and as it turns it lifts out the kind of the, the sawdust and shavings from inside the wood now we've just finished this hole we do have to pull it out a bit the log is a little wet so it tends to bind a little bit if we move it out of the way we can see here's the start of the the log underneath so the idea is we're going to drill down into this log a little ways and we can take note of how many threads there are in the bit to gauge depth and that will be where we drive a peg through this log into this anchor log so we're turning clockwise while applying some downward pressure and you can see the little shavings start to lift out of the hole If I'm really paying attention, it would be an ideal time to save some of these shavings for fire starter for later. So we're down in there. We've gone to the last thread, and that would mean we're at least uh, oh, upwards of four inches into that lower log. I'm just going to crank down inside partially and try to lift straight out to lift some of those shaved there we go lift some of those shavings out okay so in theory we should be able to drive a peg through this log down into this log and then anchor it in place all right, just before we start looking for pegs, this is a big idea that you need to understand. <clears throat> so we have wet material and dry material. What we are looking for in an ideal situation is to have one 
green material and one dry and here's the reason if you have a green material perhaps this is a tabletop or in this case our our bedding and we take a dry peg that will no longer shrink hammer it down into our material when the in this case the the edge of the bed or this log or this piece dries it will shrink around the peg in essence really shrinking and binding creating a very strong grip between the two if the reverse is the case where you have a green peg in a dry kind of wood the green peg might be tight fitting going into the dry wood which will no longer shrink but when the, your peg shrinks and dries that joint may not be as tight as you wish it was so now that we have the hole drilled and we have an estimated depth in mind in this case it's almost the length of our bit we now have to find a material to replicate that we want to avoid knots we want to avoid curves and find a very straight material as straight as possible remove the bark and then prepare it to drive in now in terms of dimensions to save you a lot of effort you need to have something the same size as the bit one trick you can do is hold the bit and your material in front of each other and if it is slightly larger than the bit you should be in good shape if it's too small okay that one's just you just see the shadow of the bit on either side that's perfect if you can clearly see either side of the bit past the uh, the stick or doweling that you wish to use it's too small and you'll have a very ineffective and weak sloppy joint so now we have to go find some sticks and I'd like to use uh, uh, some dry dried hardwood if I can they'll really be able to withstand the the pounding and uh, the pusher the, the pressure through the hole from one material into the next. Let's go find some pegs. These are certainly dry. These are hardwood. These are cedar. I do like the the straightness of the piece they're a little a little more flexible than I'd like that's why I was after some uh, hardwood pegs but uh, we'll take a couple of these back and they may work nice and straight sections roughly eight inches long we can trim it to length later but that'll be quick enough to get us started without having to do too much cutting and splitting. Okay, now that we're back with some of our sticks, this is uh, some dry cedar, but we're going to try it. One thing about the some of these sticks is they have a natural kind of slendering toward the newest shoots. So if we find an area up toward the end here, which is roughly where our hole dimensions of our hole. Okay. I feel that is just about the right area there. Okay, now that we have our peg, our possible peg, we'll go along it, clean off any knots, any loose bark. Okay. In fact, the, the end where there was a knot that I just cut off above it, I'm going to use that. That's going to be a very strong part in the peg. And what you do is 
I call capping it, knock off the top corner all the way around. By rounding off the top of your peg like that, you avoid the breakout and flare out of, uh, of the peg when you're driving it in. So we want to knock off all the little depressions all along here. And it doesn't have to be shapered to much of a point because it is just following the track of the, uh, the hole down inside. But I do want a bit of a point because if it gets to the bottom of our next piece, it really could anchor itself into the, uh, the next piece of wood in that joint. Okay. There's a possible peg. We're going to test fit in the hole. Okay, now that the peg is here, we can see the hole is cleared out. In fact, I'm just going to move it off to the side and make sure I have a clear. Now that the peg's dry fitted in the hole, I'm going to clear it off to the side and make sure I, make sure I have a clear hole all the way through my my top log in this case all the way through and the bit should pull right out we're just going to try to work that hole nice and clean so there's okay now that we can see it all the way through make sure our receiving holes also cleaned out which it is now we're going to drive this peg through this top top hole and just as it comes out the bottom you can see it coming out the bottom there that will give me a good alignment into my next next piece sure everything's where you want it. And you can hear that change. That peg is bottomed out in this bottom hole. I'm going to keep driving it a little bit. And uh, to protect the head, I can use another log like so. And from there, once it's peened down as deep as we can go, you take your saw and we clean that edge right off. That's really holding that edge tight, not moving. Ideally, I might come back and drive another peg laterally into the next piece, but that's good for now. Let's go work on the other end. Okay, we want this log right back to where it's going to be. We landmark where we want our bit to drive through the log into our receiving log. Make sure everything's tight on the collar. Now, I don't have the clearance because I'm hitting this, this post up top with the handle. So alternatively, I can move it out away and work on it out here, applying downward pressure. Not a race, it's gonna get there eventually. Now I can feel it, it's just come through and it's resting on the top of my log underneath. So I now know that that's, that's through. Now what I wanna do is landmark where this is coming through. I'm gonna push this into place and just continue to landmark. Now, with this other log in my road for the handle, this would be a good time if I wanted to, to adjust the collar. I 
And here's an example where you can adjust the kind of the the, ang the, the friction here, the ratchet system, and so I can crank it 180 and then come all around, or vice versa. So now I don't have to hit my knuckles off the post or any other obstruction. It uses that ratcheting action once the bit has started to continue drilling into the, the other side. Okay, I'm gonna lock that back straight and try to pull the drill out and brush the, the bits away from the hole so not to fill the hole up. And go we'll try to clean it out. Okay, that's clean, ready to go. Let's go make a peg. Okay, this is the end going down inside, so I'll sharpen that slightly. I don't know if it's necessary. I don't think all these kind of mortise and tenon joints follow that practice. Some people might want it to bottom out or in the ball on the hole, but I know if it's wrapped green wood, I might want it to punch into that next material, that next layer. Again, may not be necessary, but I'm not trying to split the wood. I'm just trying to anchor it down inside its next layer. Okay, coming up to the top, we're going to crown, crown the end of our, our peg. And all you do is just take that top corner. You're not making a point. You're just coming around the edge and crowning it. And that will prevent breakout as you drive the peg in. Not the straightest peg, but I think that might even uh, might work well for this hole. So just as before, we're going to ra raise the peg up. Banging it with my kukri is, uh, although probably all right, is not the best tool to use. So I think what I'll do is make a little bit of a wooden mallet to do this job. This is a good, a good way to anchor your piece that you're cutting in place. You lock it behind one knee. It's basically sitting on the log that's very stable now and with my working arm out to the side. My other hand can support the wood this way. Nice and safely cut that off. It's a little safer than trying to hold material, especially when you start because the saw can always jump and you can end up with a nasty cut. So that's a safe way to do it. Now I'll show you how to make a mallet out of this. Uh, this whole piece of uh, well, perhaps maple or ash, can't quite tell. It's uh, it's hardwood, nevertheless, and it's going to make for a great mallet. I just want to show you how to do that. Obviously, this end is uh, a little larger than you would like. So what you're going to do is measure in the, the length of your handle area, and I'm going to ring the wood with my saw all the way around, roughly in a quarter of an inch. just have to be very careful obviously I'm being very careful with how I'm doing this so it doesn't jump out very slow and with controlled strokes if 
forgot my my axe or hatchet today so that's why we're gonna have to make one of these okay little mallet tools so again very in controlled I have come in inside here same distance as the depth of my cut turn the wood Might actually be oak. Now from here, I can work my way around and carve, carve down to that <clears throat> stop cut. Now with this kukri, I designed it in such a way that I could use it as a draw knife too, grabbing both sides and draw it toward me. I could use it as a pull tool or as a push tool. In my last video, I showcased the Makatakan and this would be maybe a good application for it as well. Again, just going around, working your way around, taking off some of these high, sharp ridges from our batoning effort. I'll try to provide the uh, link to my cookery in one of my other videos, but it's really proven to uh, prove it, proven its value and worth in the field. This is a homemade bush tool. I call it a cookery, but it's I mean, it doesn't have all the uh, all the characteristics of one, but it is a real multi-purpose -to multi tool. It's not a Tom, Bear, Tom Brown tracker, but it's uh, it's been quite handy. There's a kind of bow drill socket notch, so you can hang onto it and do a bow drill and uh, some various other characteristics that make it very handy. There's a fire steel notch so I don't have to use the blade. A little lanyard so you can tie a string around it for your hand. And I know I'm cutting toward myself but it's going toward a rather tall quarter inch stop cut and I am in, in touch with the, the wood and really feeling the speed and effort that I'm shaving just these high ridges off so I'm not in any danger of hurting myself. You can see the handle of the wood really starting to take that rounded baseball bat like and that's also partially why I had that curve uh, in the uh, in the design of that kukri knife. 
from here we can clean up some of these these uh, almost feather sticks Okay, with a few minutes of effort, and uh, I think it's a uh, time well spent. Uh, I didn't want to ri run the risk of, uh, you know, breaking my uh, breaking my knife or uh, breaking my uh, cookery. So now, with a few minutes, we've come up with a very very good one or two handed mallet where we could strike uh, whatever we're pounding in, and I'm hoping to strike it on this surface here and uh, drive our peg home. I might uh, I, I I could also put a little flat there if I wanted to. Get some of the rotten loose material off there, or I could just clean it right down. Makatagan. Just like a corn cob, just rotating as I come along. There we go. That'll use a great mallet, very, very strong. Let's hammer in this peg and finish this job. Okay, with my peg now in place, I know the holes all the way through. It likes to glance off because of the, the flat surface, say, or sorry, the rounded surface here. It's glancing off her peg a little bit, but I can now see where the pegs come through. I can line it up into my uh, bottom log. Tap the two together and now drive the peg until I feel resistance. And that's all the resistance we're gonna get because the peg just broke off. But that's sunk into the wood and it's in there. Wow. That stabilized things up really nicely. All right, with the pegs in there, it's really secured this outside log from rolling away. This is the edge of the seat behind my knees, and every time I'm sitting on it, I do feel this roll, uh, this log want to roll off. But now that it's there, it's very tight, very secure. I can come along the edge of this log and now really clean it up, knock off any knots. That are protruding out. This is the this is going to be the now the face face of my my bench, and you don't want any kind of knots irritating your, your legs. Or there we go, all cleaned up now. My bed is that much wider, it's very secure, this outside log won't roll away, and I don't have to worry about lashing. Very secure, very happy with that. Okay, again, with many of the bushcraft skills, all you need is often at least one blade, whether it be a larger blade or a smaller knife, and then you're able to use that to baton anything else. 
In this case, we used another log to baton our kukri down through the edges of her mallet and really form that other camp tool. Mallet can be a push stick in the fire. This is hardwood. It's not going to break. Very, very hard, very dense, and ideal for hammering those stakes. I think with that peg breaking, it was a little large for that hole, but it was glancing off that crown peg. So I think what I might want to do is really kind of work on creating a flat space, like the face of a hammer, so that doesn't happen in the future. So like a hammer, it has that, unless you're using a ball peen hammer, it has that flat surface for striking and driving pegs, nails. So I think what we'll do, we'll just clean up and make a face on our mallet so we can do the same thing. Nice and flat surface, so anytime that you are hitting a peg, it gives us that flat, flat surface contact. I think that'll work out really well. Knock off some of this little scale and bark. go camp mallet well guys that's another short episode uh, again very very functional one today learning how to use the uh, bracing bits the auger bits um, in the uh, the handle and the hand drill that was designed to secure our bed and we might continue to use that to secure some other more permanent parts of our shelter we had a chance to uh, learn how to make proper pegs and dowlings. We're going to use those skills in some other future videos as well. To put those dowlings in, instead of banging on uh, on them with a random stick, we actually we knew that we were going to uh, need some, uh, some more pegs done, so we took a few minutes and made a, uh, a hardwood mallet with a flat face on there. That mallet's going to serve us well to drive home pegs as we continue to work on the shel shelter. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time when we have another great video. Uh, don't forget to click the bell notification. Send me any Q&As that you have about anything that you're seeing in my videos. And until next time, Jeff Allen off the gridiron. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your outdoors.